Hi to all of you. I am here to explain the Home Assistant's sixth release of 2025 is finally here. That's version 2025.6 and it rolled out on June 4th. This month it's all about quality of life improvements. Nothing massive or game-changing but a bunch of small changes that just make Home Assistant smoother, easier, and more enjoyable to use. We're talking sidebar improvements, picker updates, Bluetooth network visualizations, and even some new integrations, plus a few important deprecations that might affect your setup. Let's go through everything that's new, one step at a time. Let's start with one of my favorite updates this month, the sidebar. In case you didn't know, Home Assistant lets you customize the sidebar, rearrange it, hide stuff, and make it fit how you use it. Before, if you wanted to do that, you had to set it separately on every device, your phone, your tablet, your desktop, even if you were just switching between internal and external URLs. But now, that's all changed. With 2025.6, sidebar customization is saved in your user profile, which means your changes will apply across all your devices. So, whether you open Home Assistant on your computer or your phone, it all looks the same, much easier to manage. Plus, there's a clean new interface that lets you drag and drop menu items or hide things you don't need. Super simple. Next up, pickers. These are the drop-downs you use to select things like entities, devices, and areas in Home Assistant. With this update, pickers are getting a much-needed upgrade. You'll now see improved search that helps you find what you need faster, a more polished UI, and even manufacturer logos right inside the picker, which makes it a lot easier to spot your devices. A small detail, but it really helps when your setup has dozens or even hundreds of entities. This next one's super cool if you're using Bluetooth in your smart home. Home Assistant now includes a visual graph that shows how your Bluetooth devices are connected. You'll be able to see if a device is connected directly or if it's using a Bluetooth proxy. This kind of visualization helps you better understand your network and troubleshoot issues faster. And for those of you using Zigbee, the network graph there has also been updated to match the new style, consistent and clean. Remember the experimental areas dashboard that was introduced back in April? Well, it's been improved again in this release. Based on feedback from the community, here's what's new. There's a new action section that shows all your scripts, automations, and scenes in one place. Helpers like number inputs, timers, and counters have been moved into a new section called Others, and the entertainment section is now renamed to Media Players, since that's really what it shows anyway. These little changes make everything feel more organized and intuitive. Let's say you renamed a device or entity to something custom and now you want to reset it back to the default name. Well now with 2025.6 there's a Reset Entity ID button. You can use it to reset a single entity or reset all entities tied to a device. It brings them back to their original IDs, just like when you first added them. A helpful little tool if you want to clean things up. Now let's talk about some deprecations. Basically, things that are going away soon. First up, core and supervised installation methods are being deprecated. These are more advanced setups where people run Home Assistant inside a Python environment or with more custom configurations. Only a small percentage of users use these, but if you do, you'll now get a repair issue notification after updating. Going forward, only two installation methods will be officially supported, Home Assistant OS and Home Assistant Container. If you're not sure what method you're using, you can check by going to Settings and then About. Also, support for older 32-bit CPUs is being phased out. These setups will still get updates until December 2025, but after that, no more updates. So if you're affected, now's a good time to plan ahead. There are a few new integrations this month, and one worth highlighting is the new Amazon Devices integration. This allows you to connect and control Amazon devices, like Echo speakers or Fire TVs, directly through Home Assistant. It'll be interesting to see how it compares to the older custom integration from hacks that people have been using. A few existing integrations got some updates too. One I'm especially excited for, SwitchBot vacuums are now supported, and there's new support for the SwitchBot Lock Ultra, which includes a vision model that lets you unlock your door with facial recognition. Let me know in the comments. While you're down there, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss next week's update.